Hello and welcome to CMIF2 Financial Management, Chapter 2, IS21, related to foreign exchange impact. So do we have a foreign exchange impact when we prepare financial statements? Yes, if we have transactions in foreign currency, for instance, or if our presentation currency is different than our functional currency, the answer is yes, we do have an impact from foreign exchange differences. So let's just clarify very, very briefly what all these type of currencies mean. If you look at functional currency, is the currency in which you are preparing your trial balance, in effect. You'd expect that to be the local currency uh, where you're operating, your company is operating. However, it's not necessarily the case. So imagine you are in the United Kingdom, you are using, let's say, for your trial balance, uh, British pounds, sterling, and that would be your functional currency. Now, because your parent company, let's say, is in the US, the presentation currency may be um, US dollars. So in this particular example, you'd have pre uh, presentation currency different than functional currency. It's not always the case, of course. And let's assume this company in Great Britain is having various transactions with uh, China or with Japan. And then, of course, those transactions, they would be maybe sometimes quoted in Japanese yen. Therefore, that transaction, it would be denominated initially if you're buying from Japan in, um, in a foreign currency, in Japanese yen. And again, you have a difference here. Um, you'd have issues to deal with in terms of the um, transaction in yen, in foreign currency, to translate it into your functional currency to be able to reflect it into your local accounts and then after you have your local accounts ready you'd have to convert them of course into your presentation currency based on what we call presentation rules. So remember you have translation rules um, translation rules that are applicable to the day-to-day -to -day transactions that um, occur if you have sales or purchases denominated in foreign currency and then as at the year end you will have some presentation rules when you have to convert your accounts into the presentation currency which you assume is different than the functional currency you report in locally. Okay. Knowing those two categories of rules, very briefly, let's look at some translation rules. I would say they are fairly straightforward. So remember, you, may, uh, you have purchases and sales in different foreign currencies. So the first step you do, you have to record it in the functional currency. In my example, you are in Great Britain and you're purchasing and sell to Japan, let's say. So what are we going to do? When the transaction takes place, we are going to use what we call the spot rate ruling on the date of the translation. In many jurisdictions, that is the date when you issue the invoice, for instance. So I'm raised an invoice in Japanese yen, and at that very date, I'm looking at the exchange rate. According to the contract, we're using a certain bank as a benchmark. That is the spot rate when the transaction took place. I'm converting it into the functional currency, the one my trial balance is prepared in, and then I'm recording transaction. Now, that could happen any time during the year. Subsequently, at the end of every single accounting period, you have to translate monetary assets and liabilities at the closing rate. So you do a sort of revaluation here. You're looking at these assets and liabilities and obviously whatever is left at the end of the period and you'll have to use the closing rate and see is their value higher or lower than the values they had when you recorded them at the spot rate. And what will happen? Well, they will be higher or lower, the value, because of the fluctuations in exchange rate. Therefore, what will happen? You will have two ways of looking at these exchange differences in terms of how you treat them. Before we look at these two ways, I just wanted to mention that if you have non-monetary items, such as the value of a building, you're not going to do this exercise of let's say, revaluation of your monetary assets and liabilities, which in effect is translating them at the closing rate. Okay, so what do we do with exchange differences? I would say as a general rule, um, you have here the general rule arising um, in the year on, trans, uh, on retranslation of foreign currency, which usually is payables and receivables. You're going to do that by taking it into the profit, against the profit or loss of the period, respectively in 
operating income or operating expenses, depending if it's a um, in your favor or against you type of move. What happens if those particular exchange differences refer to retranslation of foreign currency loans, then those differences plus minus against you will go in profit, of course, but in a special, in a different section, and that would be finance income or finance cost. So any exchange differences related to loans, you basically keep um, a consistency in terms of reflection in the financial statements because they relate to loans, you will reflect them in finance income or expenditure any exchange difference in relationship to trade payable or trade receivables you are consistent and reflect them in something to do with operations therefore another type of operating income or operating expense okay let's take very quickly an example and how s uh, and let's see how it all fits together meanwhile here you have very nicely summarized for you the very basic rule for translation so that's what we'll be looking at and try to apply. So in statement of financial positions, all assets and liabilities are using the closing rate. And in statement of comprehensive income, what you have, you're going to use the average rate for the period. Remember, statement of comprehensive income is showing a cumulative effect. So transactions happen during the year, whereas statement of financial position is the picture as at a point in time. Therefore, you're using the closing rate, the rate as at that point in time. So a statement of comprehensive income, though, it's an expe exception to the average rate and is when you're going to use the um, spot rate. And that's a case of all, any large one of transactions, because if you would use the average rate for a one off transaction of a large amount, that could be very, very misleading. So it is accepted to use spot rate if the amounts are large and one off. Now let's go to the example I told you we'll go through and let's have a look here. We're going to look at the movements of a company at the year end, 31st December X1 in net assets. So you have the net assets that you bring down on 1st of January X2 and we try to say, okay, what are our assets at 31st December? So this is given information. So you are given net assets at the start of the period to which you add profit. Let's see what the movement is made up of other comprehensive income for the year that you may have to end up to the net assets that create a movement. From these net assets and profit, you're going to maybe propose some dividends. In this case, they are declared some dividends and the difference after you take out the dividends takes you to the net assets at the year end. Now you are given some exchange rates at the start of the year, at the end of the year and the average. And hopefully you remember from the basic rule, average is for statement of comprehensive income and obviously you'll need closing rates um, for the net assets for elements of statement of financial position. So let's work out first time ever together a translation of figures so again the same sort of movement it's illustrated line by line you see we copy down these figures here the same column and we're just agreeing together what exchange rates we use so as you can imagine net assets at 31st January X1 you use closing rate for that period as you do for the net assets at the year end we're using closing rate for net assets at this particular date. Any element of statement of comprehensive income will use the average rate. So profit would use average rate and other comprehensive income would use average rate. What about the dividends declared for the year? Because they are declared, considered to be declared at the year end, you're going to use the closing rate. So similar with the net assets at 31st December X1. Now, what do you do? You translate line by line. So you say, okay, net assets, I had 10,000 euros. And in dollar terms, you multiply it with 1.2 and you get the value in dollar of your net assets. Go line by line, translate your profit and you have 2,500 dollars and so on and so forth. So you translate it line by line and you do that and translate it. And then you translate your net assets. But hey, if you do the maths, 12k plus 2.5k plus 1.25k less 1.725 does not give you you have to check that out 13 to 25 so what are you gonna do 
Well, what happens when you're doing translation, obviously you expect to have some exchange differences arising in the year. So look how nicely we work it out. What you're doing is you do the statement of changes in equity for the year ended, 31st December X1. You're going to take the figures, you see this column here, I'm going to take it down. So hopefully you recognize the numbers, my net assets in dollars start, net assets at the end, I'm putting my profit, my other income and my dividends, and you getting the balancing figure here. So if you do the maths, you'll see you're missing 800, it's a positive figure. So in this case, we're having an exchange gain on translation arising in the year, so this balancing item. So what, what do you do with this um, exchange gain or loss arising on translation in the year? is the gain in the reserves of the subsidiary for consolidation if you were looking in consolidation. If not, we expressed what we are doing um, with gain or loss on translation. It goes into the uh, statement of comprehensive income in the right type of um, capture, operating or finance. Okay. In the next video, we'll look at IS21 and how it impacts if you have a group of companies. Until then, good luck with prepping and hope to be in touch with you via this video soon. All the best.